Right now, I'm joined by Shannon Moore, who writes a weekly political column for the Anchorage Daily News and hosts the statewide TV show More Up North on KYUR in Alaska. Alec McGillis, author of the New Republic's new cover story, This Is How the NRA Ends, the magazine's senior editor. Howard Wolfson, deputy mayor for government affairs and communications for New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg. And Arkansas State Representative Charles Armstrong, who represents parts of Little Rock in the state legislature. FBI agents questioned a man in New Boston, Texas yesterday in connection with the three threatening letters mailed to President Obama, New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg, and the Washington, D.C. office of Bloomberg's gun control group, Mayors Against Illegal Guns. The letters were made public this week. Uh, two so far have tested positive for the poison ricin, and a third, the letter sent to Obama, is still being tested. The letter to Mayor Bloomberg read, quote, you will have to kill me and my family before you get my guns. Anyone who wants to come to my house will get shot in the face. The right to bear arms is my constitutional God-given right, and I will exercise that right till the day I die. What's in this letter is nothing compared to what I've got planned for you. Three New York officers involved in the case experienced minor symptoms from exposure to the low-grade low ricin, but no one suffered serious injuries. Bloomberg said Wednesday that his determination to push for tougher gun laws was not shaken by the attack. The letter was obviously referred to our anti-gun efforts, but there's 12,000 people that are going to get killed this year with guns, and 19,000 are going to commit suicide with guns, and we're not going to walk away from those efforts. Bloomberg's group has renewed its pressure campaign against lawmakers who oppose gun control measures in Congress. A week ago, for example, Mayors Against Illegal Guns started running a TV ad throughout Arkansas targeting Senator Mark Pryor, likely the most vulnerable Democratic senator in the 2014 midterms, who voted in April against the bipartisan bill that would have expanded background checks for gun sales. When my dear innocent friend was shot to death, I didn't blame guns. I blamed the system that makes it so terribly easy for criminals or the dangerous mentally ill to buy guns. That's why I was so disappointed when Mark Pryor voted against comprehensive background checks. On that vote, he let us down. Tell Mark Pryor to take another look at background checks because we're tired of being disappointed. The ad was designed specifically to chip away at prior support among African Americans who make up 14 percent of registered voters in the state and who are critical to Pryor's re-election effort. Last month, Mark Glaze, the director of Bloomberg's group, told the Associated Press, quote, it's hard for me to imagine a combination of constituencies that would get Mark Pryor over the finish line if he doesn't perform exceptionally well in the African American community. Pryor, for his part, unveiled a counterattack yesterday, his first TV ad of the 2014 cycle. The mayor of New York City is running ads against me because I oppose President Obama's gun control legislation. Nothing in the Obama plan would have prevented tragedies like Newtown, Aurora, Tucson, or even Jonesboro. I'm committed to finding real solutions to gun violence while protecting our Second Amendment rights. I'm Mark Pryor, and I approve this message because no one from New York or Washington tells me what to do. I listen to Arkansas. No one from New York tells him what to do. Howard Wolfson, you're from New York. You work for the mayor who helped put this ad in the air. What do, what do you say when you see that? Well, I hope that he listens to, you know, 80-some-odd percent of our Kansans who would like him uh, to have voted yes on this piece of legislation. Uh, Mark Pryor has in the past had a bit of a mixed record uh, on gun safety measures. Uh, I think he considered the vote. He obviously went the wrong way. We hope that he'll reconsider. We hope that the ad might prompt him to do that. We hope that the ad will be watched by lots of people in Arkansas. I would take some issue with one of the things you said, which is this is a massive TV buy in Arkansas. Everyone in Arkansas is going to see this ad, black, white, regardless of whether you're Democrat or Republican. This is a bipartisan issue there. It crosses uh, racial lines, it crosses age lines, and we hope that he will respond to the vast majority of Arkansans who would like him to vote for it. Well, we'll, we'll talk more about the targeting of the ad in a second, but generally speaking, yeah, this, you put a lot of money behind this. And, and what's fascinating is, uh, okay, right, Mark Pryor did not vote for background checks last month, but like you said, his, his record on guns in the past has been mixed. In 2004, the last time an assault weapons ban was up, Mark Pryor voted for the assault weapons ban. His overall rating from the NRA is a C minus. So he is not the NRA's best friend, or he has not been the NRA's best friend in the Senate. The alternative here, we're not talking about a situation where there's a Democratic challenger, at least not yet, running to the left of Mark Pryor. We're talking about a situation where if Mark Pryor loses next year, you're going to get a Republican opponent who is definitely, couldn't possibly be to his left on guns, and is probably to his right. Every Republican congressman in Arkansas 
Arkansas gets an A from the NRA. So I'm not sure if you take Mark Pryor out here, are you really helping yourself if you replace him with a, a totally pro-gun, far-right Republican? Well, this is the issue on the table. This is the issue of the moment. This is the most important issue that is before us uh, around gun safety. And if Mark Pryor is voting no, from our perspective, he's no better or worse than a Republican who would vote no. The Mayors Against Illegal Guns, it's not a Republican organization. It's not a Democratic organization. Mike Bloomberg is, in, is an independent. Uh, there are lots of Republicans and Democrats in the organization. We're not in the business of trying to elect a Democratic Senate or Republican Senate. We are trying to get reasonable gun safety legislation through the Senate. And we are targeting both Republicans and Democrats. We're running three ads now. Two are in Republican states, Arizona and New Hampshire, targeting Republican senators. One is targeting a Democrat. And we hope that they will... Yeah, uh, you've got just a, you've got Jeff Flake in Arizona, Republican, but he's not up till 2018. Right. Kelly Ayotte, New Hampshire, not up till, right. till 2016. Right. Not a lot of vulnerable Republicans up in 14. That's just the map. That's the right. reality. Uh, Mr. Right, Pryor, you, need, you need to make an example somewhere. Right. Is Mr. Pryor is vulnerable. Uh, he's in real trouble. And we hope that he'll take a look at this and change his mind. We hope that, that many of the people, or at least enough of the people uh, who voted the wrong way, will change their mind based on what they're hearing from their constituents. If you look at the polling in places where people voted no, their poll numbers went down. Their poll numbers have gone down uh, in places where people walked away from reasonable gun safety. They've gone down in places where we've run these ads. When voters are informed of what their senators did, they don't like it. I think Mr. Pryor's numbers are going to go down. He's up with an ad countering us. Obviously, we expected that. I'm quite confident that we have the resources to keep doing what we're doing. Uh, I don't know whether he does. That'll be up to him. He will have a Republican opponent. In fact, he's getting hit by uh, a right-wing group on another issue now. If he's getting squeezed from the quote-unquote left on gun issues, squeezed from the right on other issues, he may have a real political problem. Right. Well, so, Charles, this is, this is your state. Mark, Mark Pryor, Democratic senator, your party, your state. Uh, what do you make of what Mayor Bloomberg's group is doing? Well, Mayor Bloomberg's group, they, they, they're looking at ways to probably come out and, and make sure that we have plenty of gun safety laws on the book. And Mark did vote, uh, uh, make, he voted against the, I believe it was matching to me. The, the background uh, check bill, yeah, right. The background right. check bill. And also one reason that he stated in, in Arkansas that he, the reason why he voted against it was because it wasn't, it was too broad. It didn't really get down to the nuts and bolts so the, on, in the background check. So that's to be seen. How well, well how, did that, how did that vote go over in the Democratic Party in Arkansas, seeing a you know, Democratic senator from Arkansas voting against background checks? What has been the mood of the Democratic Party after that? Is it, you know, we got to make this guy pay for it, or is it, hey, that's what you got to do to succeed and win an election as, an, as a Democrat in Arkansas? Well, I, I don't think it's a real mood there. I think people are studying, trying to see what to do about this issue at this time. Mm -hmm. um, Alec, your, your cover story this week is the, the end of the NRA. Right. Um, and, I, and I look at that and I say, well, you clearly have money here on, on the sort of pro-gun control side that we haven't seen before. But the context for all this is we're talking about the right. failure of the background checks bill uh, you know, in, in April. So that was sort of an example of the NRA still being very powerful. No? Right. But I, I would say that the fact that we're having this ongoing fight now in Arkansas and other states is a sign that things really have changed, that it, we, everyone thought this was just dead when, when, the, when the law, when the, the bill failed. But it's still, we're still talking about it. It's, it might be coming up for a vote in July. And you now have an actual discussion of fallout in these states. that You, know, you didn't used to have that back in the day. The NRA would just win and that was it. And just the fact that you now have an attempt to hold people accountable for the vote on the other side is fascinating. I mean, you just, you didn't have the resources before for that. Right. And you also didn't have the sort of the grassroots reaction. There was a real kind of almost a revulsion against that law, among, among a lot, of, against that vote from a lot of people. Like, wait, what do you mean? But this, this thing that was supported by 80, 90 percent of people doesn't doesn't get through even the Senate. I mean, that's just that's just wrong. So what I what I saw out there was just a real uh, just a backlash in a, in a lot of places. And now you have the money actually to to back that backlash up. Now there is, as you pointed out, there's this tension about how you how you do this. I mean, there there is a question of is it does it make sense to go after Democrats when the Republicans would be no better? But I think what the mayor's group is is trying to do is just change the calculus on this and to and to get people get elected officials thinking twice. It used to be the easy, safe thing to do was to vote with the gun lobby. Now you're trying to get people in most states to think, you know what, maybe I should go the other way. Maybe this, maybe the, the, the self-interested smarter thing is to go with, go the, for reasonable gun control. And, and that's what, the, what, they're, what they're trying to do right here. It's, 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 it really is a new thing. We, um, we flew Shannon 
12 hours from, from Alaska, but Alaska, another one of these red states, rural states, states with a strong gun, gun tradition with a Democratic senator, a Democratic senator who's up next year who voted against background checks. I want to talk to you about how his vote is playing in Alaska and how 2014 is shaping up for him because of it after this. I was just, uh, Shannon, starting to talk about Mark Begich, Democratic senator from Alaska, elected in 2008, up for re-election next year. We say Mark Pryor's the most vulnerable Democrat. Maybe it's a tie with, with Mark Begich in Alaska. You know, very Republican state. I think it's voted uh, for one Democrat if for president in its entire history. That was the LBJ landslide in 64. Um, he used to be, Mark Begich was a mayor before he was a United States senator. Right. He was a member of Mayor Bloomberg's group, Mayors Against uh, Gun Violence, um, and yet he voted against background checks uh, last month um, or in April. How, how is that playing in Alaska, and how are the attacks from groups like Bloomberg's playing in Alaska? Well, it's interesting. I mean, the Alaska gun culture, I mean, I think there's a, a lot of discovery shows about all the hunting and all, all, you know, the lifestyle there. And so people are really familiar with guns. It's not a, a, as big a hairy deal there. It's just part of your life. Um, but even 60% of Alaskans support background checks. Uh, so I was really surprised at Senator Begich's vote. And he told me that I shouldn't be because he'd always been consistent on his gun views for 25 years. And I was like, well, you know, we ask people to evolve all the time on issues, whether it's LGBT rights or whatever. Like, you need to evolve on this a little bit and try to push him. I actually think that that what Bloomberg's group is doing is actually helping Mark Begich in the state of Alaska. I really do. I think it's, it's sort of like what we saw with Pryor's ad, with like, they're not going to tell me what to do. So the issue doesn't become, yeah. uh, uh, so that's what I'm kind of curious about, because it was, we 90% was the figure we were talking about a few months ago. 90% of the people support background checks. How could anybody vote against this? You know, it should be a no-brainer. Um, it polls a little less than that in Alaska. But at some point, the issue stops being, in terms of how it gets filtered into the political system, it stops being literally about background checks and sort of almost like tribalism takes over. Mm -hmm. You know, we're a gun state. We're gun voters. We're Second right. Amendment voters. And you're sort of saying that being attacked by the liberal mayor of New York City when you're in rural, you know, gun-friendly Alaska, you can sort of turn the issue into, hey, I'm standing up to the, the big city liberals? Is that sort right. of... Right. Like, they're not... I'm, I'm still like you. I haven't forgotten who I am. And he's actually running ads saying that all the time. Right now, he's been running them. So he's he's really playing for the, the middle, more middle of Alaska. Uh, the people who got him elected aren't real happy with them. There are letters to the editor all the time saying, you know, I'm, I, I walked door to door for you. I'm not going to do that again. There, and, and, you know, I think people are just reacting and being upset and putting this out because there's no way in God's green earth that they're going to be like, okay, I'm so mad at Mark Begich over this gun vote. Please, God, let me vote for Joe Miller. No, that, Nobody's going to do that. That's not the expectation, but I, I mean, I've been doing this long enough. I've been through enough midterm elections to know what happens in midterm elections. Turnout drops off. And it really becomes a question of who's motivated enough to go out and vote in a midterm where turnout, turnout is much less uh, than it is in a presidential year. And you don't have, in a place like Arkansas, you don't have to have many Democrats sort of say, you know what, Mark Pryor's really kind of turned his back on his values. He's turned his back on my values. And on election day, I'm not going to go out and vote for the Republican, but maybe I'll just stay home. You don't need many of those people to result in a loss. That race is going to be decided by one or two or three points. It's going to be that close. He can't afford to have progressive Democrats or even mainstream Democrats take a look at him and that's why well, there, well, there was a, there's a fascinating statistic about you're talking about a, a turnout and that's why we mentioned in the intro Mark Glaze from your group saying specifically that, that you're interested in targeting African-American voters in Arkansas but but what's in, the interesting statistic on this was in 2012 if you looked at the, the mobilization of African-American voters by the Obama campaign they got 77 percent turnout among African-Americans in North Carolina the swing state of North Carolina in Arkansas the turnout was only 47 percent so Charles it, it does seem when you're a Democrat trying to win in Arkansas uh, you need not just heavy support from African Americans, you need heavy turnout from African Americans. And, you know, the president now is, is you know, closely associated, obviously, with the push for more gun control. Does that hurt Mark Pryor's standing among African Americans, that he's opposing, that he's opposing the president on this, that he's opposing his, you know, his party in Washington on this? Where does, where does Mark Pryor stand right now in Arkansas among African Americans? What's the enthusiasm for him? This is midterm, and African Americans are going to be looking for issues. They don't have a real... I guess you could say somebody to really bring them out and they're going to be really looking at the issues. Arkansas is a rural state and you don't have 
too many black gun enthusiasts in, in the state of Arkansas. So, so Mark is going to have to go out and try to win that group, pull them into him, and get them out to vote. That's the main thing in Arkansas, getting the people out to vote at midterm. That's what it, that, that, added, and, that added. So, and, and because of uh, NRA and. Uh, Mayor Bloomberg's group. See, Mayor Bloomberg put some balance in there. NRA had control of the state of Arkansas prior to this, and so the mayor's group puts puts put more balance into this situation. So people are going to have to look and, and listen to ads and look close and, and check people's voting records to see where they stand on different issues and question them during their campaign. And that's what um, that Alec wants to get in. Yeah, we'll go right after this. <laughs> All right, Alec, you're about to say. I was just going to say that I think what's so fascinating about that prior ad that came out uh, yesterday is that far from trying to sort of rally his base for, or, or shore up his base for the midterm, as you said, he needs these these folks to come out. He the ad really kind of actively pushes away at them. I mean, he's talking about President Obama's. I I didn't I did not support President Obama's gun control proposal. He he's got he's getting this attack from the you know from the left from the gun control side, uh, from the mayor's group, and f instead of trying to shore up against that, that, that attack and say, well, you know, I thought it was an okay bill, but not the best bill, or that kind of defense. He's instead just going the other way. And he really seems to think that his, his biggest challenge in the midterm is, is getting sort of the, the broad sort of red state middle in, in Arkansas. And he doesn't seem that worried about his flank. I, I, I would say that that's probably uh, overconfident. I mean, he, he does need to worry about people coming out in a, in, a, in a low turnout midterm. And he doesn't, what that ad is not helping him in that regard. Yeah, well, that's Dave Wasserman, who, who does numbers, uh, the numbers expert for the Cook Political Report, wrote about this the other day that, that this pattern has sort of emerged in the last decade um, in, in elections where this, this rising base of the Democratic Party, the coalition of the ascendance, a term that, that's been thrown around to describe it, you know, young voters, uh, non white voters, single voters, these are voters who really are not coming out in midterm elections yet. And so if you're a Democrat, especially in a red state or a swing state, and you're up for re election in a non presidential election year, your calculation, at least right now, the way these turnout patterns are working, is to be playing, is to be going after sort of the, the older voters, a little bit more Republican leaning voters, because they're the ones who are more likely to turn out. But but like in, in Mark Pryor, I, you know, he said last year in the presidential race, he, he didn't care whether Obama or Romney won. So that's a guy who clearly is thinking about this. But, it, but it's interesting, you know, um, he is looking for cover clearly from groups like the NRA to appeal to more Republican friendly voters in Arkansas. And what's most notable to me is he's not getting it. When Kelly Ayotte in New Hampshire voted against background checks and she started taking you know, taking heat from, from gun control groups. The NRA went up there and put an ad up on her behalf. There's no ad from the NRA in Arkansas. There's no ad from the NRA in, in Alaska. You guys went after Joe Baca, the congressman, Democratic congressman in California last year, Howard. Uh, you guys went after him. The NRA wasn't there for him. He was there for them for years. Uh, that, what does that tell us about the NRA? Well, I, I hope it sends a message to Democrats. I mean, obviously, there's a, a whole Republican side of this conversation we haven't gotten to, but I hope it sends a message to Democrats that the NRA might not be for you if you've been for them. That they will walk away from you, uh, and uh, you know, Democrats who are looking at this look. The vast majority of Democrats in the Senate voted for the bill, which was great. The vast majority of Democrats in the House support the bill, which is great. But in order to get to 60, we need more of them, and we're not going away. Uh, we're going to keep making the case. Uh, I, Alec is, was exactly right. In the past, you'd have these votes, the NRA would win, and our side of the ledger would kind of walk away with our heads down, and we've got the resources to continue the fight, and we're not going away. And there are millions of Americans who don't want us to go away. They want us to keep making the argument, taking the fight uh, to these folks until we get some real change. Well, and, and I, it feels like you need, um, you talk about not having enough targets for 2014 to make examples of. You're left going after a Democratic senator in a red state where the effect would be to elect a right-wing Republican because you have no other choices. What happens, though, if you know, we're talking about now Manchin Toomey being revived in the Senate? What happens if Kelly Ayotte changes her mind because of the pressure campaign? What happens if a few other senators change their mind? This gets through the Senate, and you somehow are able to get a House vote on it. It maybe doesn't pass the House. Republicans vote no on it. But that opens up, that would seem to me, that opens up a whole new world well, of possibilities for 2014. We're, we're going to look at, at, at House districts regardless of whether or not there's a House vote. Let's be clear. We're not just going to look at Democrats in the Senate. We're going to look at Republicans in the Senate, and although there are certainly more Democratic uh, targets in the Senate, we are going to look at Republicans in the House, too. There is a bill. We'll see who's co-sponsoring that bill. And obviously, if there's a vote, that'll be a very clear indication. But no, look, I am confident 
that if we could get to the House, that there will be 218 votes in the House. There are enough districts in this country, including Republican districts, suburban Republican districts, where this is an 80-20 or 90-10 issue. Uh, so we've got to get those 60 votes in the Senate, then we're on to the House. I think we get 218 votes in the House. But to be clear, regardless, we're going to be looking at House targets as well as Senate targets. I, I really think that what the mayor's group has done has has shown the NRA for what they are, which is this very, very partisan. I mean, it's not about issues because if you're a Democrat like Senator Begich and you voted the way the NRA wants you to, the most you can hope for is that they don't put out a flyer that says, you know, F minus about you or endorse your, your whoever's opposing you. I mean, the, you are not going to get any money. You're not going to get any support. Maybe you just won't get targeted by them. And, and that's, that's the best you can hope for with what would be an A rating from the NRA. That's ridiculous. And so what I think we, what the mayor's group has done is to really show, look, this is about our issue. We're going to go after you if you're Republican. We're going to go after you if you're a Democrat. We're going to go after you if you oppose this measure for us. And I think maybe maybe shifting the conversation like you're talking about, shifting the focus about what this is really about. And uh, I, I'm pretty sure, I mean, if I was a gun manufacturer, I would have donated to Obama. I would have voted for him because he's made them more money than anybody's ever made them. Right. Uh, my thanks to Arkansas State Representative Charles Armstrong, the biggest political figure in the smallest state, made an enormous gamble this week. I'll explain next.